Twitter's become, once again for the last at least week, very Assassin's Creed. Yeah, a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I and I don't hate it, and I'll ex- and I'll explain why, because I feel like you can't wait for the next one. Uh, no, uh, no, no. So you can play no? it. No, not playing the next one, James. I'm not playing any more. You just wait. Games. You just wait. I'll play the old ones, and that's it. Now, what I was gonna say was I don't hate mm. it because you're looking at the guy that's winning right now, and I'm pointing at myself just so much. <laughs> it's not you, James. It's not you. Yeah. I, I feel like a winner. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it's understandable. Wh- why do you think I feel like a winner, James? Well, you know, look. I why I'm a winner. Look, it's difficult to explain this, right? I don't want to just say, you know, we all yeah. agree with you with regards to Valhalla. Yeah, 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 Cuz look, yeah, 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 I yeah, yeah. just just, you know, explain to them. Look, I've always agreed with you with the issues of Valhalla. Yeah. That what's happening though in this past little bit and it's sort of coming from playing AC1 a lot is that the issues that I have are kind of like outweighing the things that I like, at least in my mind. So it's yeah. like... Well, this is how I always felt, and now yeah. you're remembering yeah. the old games the same way I do. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those weird... Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's a weird, it's a weird one. Because at the same time, I do still love a lot of what I loved in Valhalla. Like, I still do. It's still, it's still all there. But then it's like... It's it's also the fact that fucking Ubisoft post launch of just it's it's getting worse somehow, yeah. um, and it's it's bothering me more like whether it's like marketing or just the fan base in general, and I'm just like, I just feel so, ugh, I just don't like any of it, and it's bothering me. When's then, this first expansion come out? The like the main DLC, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't know. They said not to expect it before April, I think. Oh really? So yeah. You know that like druid one. Yeah, the druid one. Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait for them to come out and hear all of you shit on them because they'll be so bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's my yeah. I mean, we were talking on Discord, and I mean, I'm gonna call it now. I think both DLCs are gonna be absolutely terrible, like Odyssey level terrible. Um, yeah. I think that's gonna be the case. I don't think there's gonna be anything good in there, to be honest. If there is, I'm yeah. gonna be really surprised. But I think it's gonna be just a bunch of tedious bullshit tasks that it, you know some side team has developed, so there's not gonna be any joy in them. Darby is yeah. not writing them, not involved with the writing team. He said he's like he he did some advising on it, but like yeah, you yeah, know what does that mean? Um, yeah. So I just don't. I just think I'm gonna be like just mad and like. The thing is, like, as I'm playing Valhalla, like, there are moments as you're playing it that I'm like, oh, this is really cool and I'm really enjoying this. But then when you look back on all of it, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Something that I think, was it something that Jamie said? Was that Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it means the stuff that happens in the game that you can find, like the Assassin stuff and, and everything that's cool, means more to the Assassin's Creed Wikipedia page than it does to the actual story of the game and i think yeah. that's pretty much the whole thing and it's just like those things are just bothering me so much more yeah. now um yeah and it's just yeah it's it's, it's a weird one and so i like I've, de- I've delayed my big valhalla video until after the dlc as well because i want just a full picture to be able yeah. to say to be able to say my proper piece and also i've fucking i've privated my other valhalla videos as well that i put out after release because i just don't agree with them anymore um i yeah. think i think yeah it's it's a fucking weird one uh, what he, what he, he calls himself, he's a devoted Assassin's Creed fan. So, um, he's mm. a devoted Assassin's Creed fan that says AC1 was basic as hell. So, you know, he's, you know, you know. Devoted. Devoted, yeah. 100%. I swear, if anyone says that Assassin's Creed 1's a bad game, you ah, ah, ah. You know what I mean? Like, your opinion's gone. Like, that's the end. You're not, you do, look, look. You're not one you, of us. If Assassin's fine, Creed 1. You can think that. You can think Assassin's Creed 1's bad, but you're not one of us. You're not the purist. You're, no, you're, you're the new fan. You're a new fan. Yeah, look, if you think Assassin's Creed 1 isn't good and you're like, Assassin's Creed 1 wasn't good, you just, the, I think maybe you just don't like Assassin's Creed. That's really what it comes down to. Because how can you dislike Assassin's Creed but be an Assassin's Creed fan? You're just kind of not. I feel like you just don't yeah. actually like Assassin's Creed. And it's, it's you know, those people that they played AC1 and they were like, oh, this game needs, uh, this needs to be, you know, easier. There needs to be le- no modern day, modern day bad. Um, 
our ca- main character got being more funny um and we're just like no i don't like it it's bad and then ubisoft slowly you know changed the cater to these people that <sighs> Man, it's just don't like it the franchise you know yep. i love making my game for people that don't like my game that's well done yeah you've, you've nailed it that's cool. Um, that's dude. That's what I want to talk about. That's the shit that's mm. interesting to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the same for me. I'm just happy. I said on Twitter that the I, what I hated so much about being an AC focused channel was that I had to talk about games that I didn't like and the weren't yeah. for me. And yeah. that was I think yeah. that's what killed it for me. Like I just hated that I was involved in these discussions that I didn't really feel like I should be a part of. Like you know, to sit here and be like you know, uh, Origins misses this thing or Va- Valhalla whatever or Odyssey you know. And people are just being like, oh, just get, take off your rose-tinted glasses, you're stuck with the nostalgia. And it's like, I just can't deal with this. Like, heart, like 70% of the fucking Assassin's Creed fan base now loves what this new thing is and have, have never played an Ezio game. I've never played yeah. AC1. And so you just don't get it. Yeah. These are two, they're two different franchises at this point. Assassin's yeah. Creed now and Assassin's Creed as it used to be, they're two different products. They're two different games. And yeah. so what I'm a fan of is classic assassin's creed assassin's creed classic we can call it um that that's what i'm a fan of modern assassin's creed i'm not a fan of that's not those games aren't for me um so yeah. talking about them is just there's there's just no point there's no point in doing it it's like honestly it's like the difference between the classic tomb raider games and the rebooted tomb raider games they're different products that are catering to different audiences um and that's why you you split you end up splitting audiences like that and it's the same with assassin's creed um I'm just not interested in these new games really. They just don't they don't do the things that I fell in love with the franchise for. Like I there was there's something about those original games that was just so engaging for me uh, on a gameplay yeah. and story level that they just they don't make those games anymore though. Um so I just do want to talk about, you know, AC1 to Revelations and Black Flag um because I love those games and those are, you know, yeah. those are Assassin's Creed games. That's what I want to talk about. I don't really have yeah. an interest in anything else. Yeah, same. We're on the same page, buddy. We're on the same page. That's good. But you're gonna still play the next game. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Unless it's so, and not Sophia. Unless it's Quebec, I won't if it's Quebec. Yeah. Not okay. touching it. I won't play anything Quebec, mate. So I'm just not. Dude, I can't put myself through that again. But anything else, yeah. I'll play. Um, regards of whether it looks good or not, I'll just play it anyway. Um, yeah. Because why not? Yeah thing that i've noticed with the most recent sort of tv spots and drops have been um we're finally seeing a bit more of the shield mm-hmm. yeah um wh- have you seen that 30 second tv spot and you saw a bit more of sam with the shield i think so i think i've seen it um yeah so does that like, it's giving me comfort is that giving you comfort that that's the storyline we're going to get with him yeah yeah it's nice to see because i guess i did think i mean before the show Gave, we had any trails or whatever i guess my thought process going into it was like well it's got to be about you know very focused on sam you know like obviously at the end of endgame steve gives him the shield and it's like you know him taking on this mantle of captain america that steve trusted him with and being able to take that on and learn about it and then when you see some of the trailers you're like oh is that what they're doing or is he just still going to be you know falcon and the winter soldier together are doing their thing but like then you see you know more shots of him with the shield and it's like okay so it looks like that's clearly a large part of this um i'm just worried the the the, the lesson he learns because i want to see falcon become captain america i want him to take on that role and feel like it fits him what i don't want yeah. the show to do is by the end him go i don't need to be captain america i can be falcon or whatever it would kind of oh, feel God. like a betrayal of steve Uh, and i'm just i guess i'm kind of worried that's what they might do um but i hope i'm wrong i hope it is everything that i want it to be but i guess we're not going to know until march 19th well the latest tv spot had sam saying as an old friend once said a good friend of mine once said um the price of freedom is high oh right yeah yeah yeah. i don't think i've actually seen this oh okay do you want to do you want to watch it i can do where is it let's watch it yeah, so there's a few things in that. You see a bit more with... I mean, that feels like a Sam trailer. Mm-hmm. You yeah, at the mean? end you've got, like, the Disney Plus logo in front of the Captain America shield as well, which is a nice bit yeah. of symbolism there, just having that shield always yeah. on display. Um, 
Yeah, which is quite nice. I'm wondering though if this show goes goes down the route of not Sam becoming Captain America, but the two of them becoming the symbol of Captain America. Because you've got Sam throws the shield at the end, and then Bucky catches it. Yeah. After, and I'm like, are they gonna go like? Are they going to go down the route of, oh, actually, both of them working, they learn to work together so well as a team that they both represent what Captain America is? And I don't know if I like that as a theory that I've yeah. just said. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like it either because um, Bucky has too much baggage he needs to redeem, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, look, he's a part of Steve, but he's... His character's got his own journey to go on. And it's he's not also not Cap. Like, he's not got those same qualities, whereas Sam does. It's yeah. like Sam and, and Steve identify with each other pretty much instantly because they were yeah. so similar. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't want them to go down that route. I just don't... Bucky's not... That's I mean, that's why Steve didn't give Bucky the shield because yeah. it's, you know, it's it's obviously not the right choice. So I hope that's not yeah. what they do. I haven't talked to you much about Melody of Memory because mm-hmm. um, I haven't played it yet. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you think of Melody of Memory in terms of story? Did it give you good story following on from Kingdom Hearts 3 without necessarily spoiling anything? Yeah, there's not a lot of it. Um, there's not a lot of story. I mean, there's a decent like chunk because the, the only story you get is right at the end when you finish the main, st- the main game. Um, yeah. You get a cutscene. Um, or a couple you get a few cutscenes um which is you know full of information and stuff and uh really sets up where they're going next so i think overall as a game like i just i really enjoy the game itself the story that they gave was well while there wasn't a lot of it there were some really cool moments in there and uh sets up what comes next in a way that sort of is very it's pretty obvious where they're going and what they're going to do in the next main title um, or next title right. in general, so that's fun. So it just sort of gives you this bigger picture of like, yeah, okay, I, get, I see where we're going now. Um, ah. Yeah, it links it in with Remind like and that. stuff, and it's just do you, good. Do you feel Do you feel like there'll be another side game between Melody of Memory and Kingdom Hearts 4? I'm not sure. Um, I think the next main, I think the next game could be KH4. Um, and it could be a a very different cage game than what we're used to but i feel like okay. what they're doing is almost too big to be a side game um okay it feels like it could could be cage four or maybe they maybe event, i don't know maybe there is a side game to do there leading into a cage four i don't know though um or is it setting up multiple do. things because there's a lot set up at the end of remind well, yeah well uh with so many of our characters yeah, it like, sets. Unless well, there are four and they're all involved, or is it like three it's, different stories? At the same time? It's difficult to explain without spoiling it, but I think the direction is pretty clear as to what they're doing. Um, but then there are other things that they do set up, like tying into potentially Union Cross things, and like yeah. the ancient Keyblade wielders, and how that links to Scarlet Ad Kylum and Daybreak Town, and there's lots of elements that link that I think is really cool. The Yen City is sort of giving out these directions, like you do this, you do that, um, to sort of, yeah. I think there's a clear main direction they're going in, um, but then there are these little side things that maybe they'll just be like things that we'll see. So, like in KH three, the main story is obviously Sora doing what he's doing, but then sometimes you'll phone up um, Mickey and Riku and see what they're doing. Like Mickey and Riku went to the realm of darkness, and then they were just wandering about raiding garden or whatever. Um, potentially you know in a kh4 you've got the main focus but then you know what are these other characters doing um um, on their little missions that they've been sent off on Uh, or maybe those are games you can actually follow um in little side games so who knows what they do with that but i think the main direction is pretty clear by the end of uh melody memory